So we're now going to uh, move into uh, a discussion which I, I think is a nice lead on from Aaron's um, points in terms of the corporate and shared services reform program and the, the business um, standard processes. Um, now some of you may know that um, previously I had a role in, uh, in taking responsibility for corporate and shared services reform um, in an earlier incarnation, so it's very pleasing and fulfilling for me um, to see you know, what Pedro and the broader team and Sally have been able to, um, to do and achieve um, on that journey around the, um, the processes and how they're now really coming to life in the work that um, teams like Aaron and others are, are doing. So um, let me introduce Sally Ingram, who's the Executive Director for the Corporate and Shared Services Reform Program. Um, Sally's been instrumental in facilitating the release of both the updated version six processes and the new enterprise asset management processes. Um, now, Sally's worked in a number of senior consultant and senior management roles, both nationally and internationally, with a focus on process improvement and organisational change. She's got a breadth and depth of experience in the analysis and implementation of process improvement and measurement and program governance. It's my pleasure to welcome Sally up here today to provide an overview of the work that's been undertaken with the New South Wales Government standard business processes and their importance in the design and delivery of products and services to government. So let's welcome Sally. Hello. Um, so uh, what I'd like to tell you today is a bit about um, the Corporate and Shared Services Reform Program in OFS and particularly then what does that have to do with postmodern ERP and adaptive sourcing. Um, largely what we do is um, we build and maintain and improve a set of New South Wales Government standard business processes and you will have seen many times these were mentioned, it was nice to see in, in Aaron's presentation there. Um, we are aiming to support both um, agencies um, within government and also to support industry and we are aiming to build a good relationship between the two and facilitate um, buying. Okay. So what we do is we have a range of services that empower and support agencies and their corporate shared services reform programs. Um, what we are aiming to do with agencies is work with them to accelerate their programs. So what we're doing here is reusing. We provide a set of business processes that they can use as their base for their blueprint. So it doesn't matter whether they are um, aiming for a cloud solution, a utility solution, whether they're aiming for a hybrid solution. These processes that we provide can be used for any one of those. This helps our agencies by not starting with a blank sheet of paper. It helps our agencies by being able to share um, amongst each other. And what we find is each time we work with a different agency within government, we take the learnings from the agency back into these business processes and we improve them so that the next time they're used, they're even better. These are available to any one of you, anyone um, in this room in your organizations can get access to these processes. So please do, if it, um, there should be some information in your pack about getting access to those processes, but please do um, speak to me or speak to one of my team about that today um, if you haven't seen or, under, or know how to get access to them. We also aim on the other side to empower industry. So the Corporate and Shared Services Reform Program is the program that first introduced Category Q, which was launched uh, last year. There are a number of categories within Category Q, which Pedro has already spoken about this morning. The initial category was Category Q01, um, which is for anyone who provides ERP-related services. What we have done, though, is we've been working up the levels of the PACE model, and we've been introducing other subcategories that have more and more relevance to agency needs and what agencies will be buying. So we've introduced, um, since then, Category Q, uh, Category Q02 sorry, um, for HCM solutions. Category Q03 and 04 for SaaS and PaaS solutions. Um, and Category, category Q05 was our most recent one um, for um, EMS solutions. 
And you're going to find that we will introduce more and more. Um, as there's more demand and as there's more need, we will introduce more categories. And we want to move up into that innovation layer and start introducing categories, such as categories for BI and BPO as well. So about the processes. Um, Currently within our set of processes, we have um, four sets of end-to-end -end processes. We have human resources, finance, procurement, and we just introduced enterprise asset management processes in January this year. What we aim with all of those processes is to cover from end to end. Um, we cover everything that you would need to do within those processes. Um, what we also do is we add a unique factor into that by implementing a whole of government policy into those processes. So there are a number of policies in government that agencies um, across the board need to adhere to and it can be quite difficult to do because everyone can interpret those policies different, differently and it takes time to interpret them. It takes time to figure out how we are going to change the way we work to be able to meet those policies. By building them in, we make it a lot easier for agencies to be able to adhere to those policies. By building them in, we also make it a lot easier for industry to be able to provide solutions that will meet government needs and will also support whole of government policy. So this, is, uh, this slide just shows what's in those processes. There are a number of elements that we've added into those processes. So it's not just processes themselves. We have the processes at a level one and a level two and a level three. A level three is essentially about, just above, say, a work instruction level. Um, each of our um, internal clients or agencies will use these slightly differently. So they will get their own database and they'll make some amendments to the processes because obviously they need to adapt them to be able to meet their particular circumstances. So we can't really go below level three because that will, start, that will begin to differ across the agencies. But the processes themselves, whilst they're very, very useful accelerators for the reform programs and they're very, very useful for industry to understand how, how um, government needs to work and what the solutions need to support. We have introduced a number of other elements around that which, was, which make it even more useful. Business requirements is the first. Um, every time industry providers receive an RFI and are responding to an RFI um, from government, you may find that the RFI is, has some similarities in it and some major differences in it. It could be that different agencies are looking for the same type of system, but they have written their requirements quite separately. What we're doing here is building a set of requirements that link into the business processes so that that doesn't need to happen anymore. Agencies will be able to use the same set of requirements and we will reuse those requirements and we'll improve those requirements each time they are used. It also means then from an industry perspective when you are responding to those requirements, if you've responded similarly for another agency before, you'll be able to pull out your previous response and you'll probably find the requirements are quite similar. Beyond that though, Category 2 Q takes it beyond that because why should you have to respond to many, many different RFIs repeatedly from different parts of government? So Category Q aims to um, pre-qualify providers um, using one RFI, um, get you onto the category, get you shortlisted, and then enable our agencies to be able to use that shortlist and understand how you are pre-qualified onto that, onto that um, list. So it saves repeat, repeated reuse. We're also adding metrics into, those into these processes. These metrics are to enable us to benchmark effectively across government. If everyone measures these processes in the same way, then we'll start to be able to compare one area to another. And we'll also have a layer of process effectiveness measures in there too. Process effectiveness measures enable corporate shared services across government to be able to measure and continually improve. I mentioned that we've built in whole of government policies um, and we continue to do that. Policies change, so you'll find that sometimes our processes do change. And that's the reason why we're on release version 6.1 at the moment, and we've got 6.2 coming in June. The pro Although we're not drastically changing the processes themselves, we do improve them on a regular basis whenever we find that as we're working with different clients um, that, that, that improvements could be made. But as there are changes to policy, when new policy comes in, we need to adapt the processes to be able to fit that. Um, 
We don't generally change the processes considerably. What we often do is change the elements around them. And we, when we do that, we have very clear release notes that explain what we've done. So if at any point you want to understand if you offer a service that meets those processes and you and they've now changed and you want to understand whether you would need to change that service, we provide a set of release notes that explain exactly what we've done there. The last element that we're building in here is roles. Um, so the Public Service Commission in um, New South Wales government has a number of standard roles and capabilities that are used all across government. We are building those roles and capabilities into the processes so that those processes could also be used for organisational design and not simply the base set processes for um, the uh, ERP solution. So I mentioned we improved them and we changed them and we have a release schedule to do that. Um, we are currently on release 6.1. Uh, 6.2 will be released in June. Um, so this slide just gives you an idea of some of the things you wor we're working on. You'll see the process is in blue. So we've largely finished all of the process changes we're going to make, um, with the exception of IT service management because we're introducing um, service operations processes into version 6.2 in June. Um, with the others, we're really working on the other elements around them to improve them. So you'll see that the processes don't change too much, but the elements do. Um, 7.0 has not been um, scheduled at the moment. Um, we're aiming to probably do that around October, November this year. But I, I, I want to just reiterate, we're not changing the fundamentals of the process. What we're doing is improving them. And we also welcome su so any suggestions for improvement. So with category Q, um, the processes have been used as the base for a number of the categories in category Q. So with Q03 and Q04, SAS and PAS, and with Q05, EMS, the pre-qualification criteria um, that were set out in the RFIs to get onto those categories were based on this set of New South Wales government um, standard business processes. So what we are saying is that you are much more likely to get onto these categories, get onto those categories within category Q and, and subcategories that are existing and subcategories that we're introducing in the future if the services that you provide align to those New South Wales standard business processes. Agencies um, such as um, uh, the presentation that you've just seen from Aaron um, are building in the need to align to these corporate shared services reform processes as, as part of um, the criteria that, that really need to be met because the more we standardise across government, the more efficient that we're going to become. So I, I encourage all of you, if you haven't seen these processes, you haven't looked at those processes, please do. So just in summary, um, we work on both sides of the equation. So from an agency perspective, we are providing essentially a range of accelerators that will speed up and um, improve the standardization of corporate shared services reform. So we offer the base processes, we offer whole of government policy, um, roles for organization design, requirements for system selection, and metrics for benchmarking and process effectiveness. And from an industry perspective, we offer those processes that as a so you can access those processes, you can develop services and, and systems to meet the New South Wales government needs based on those processes, and you can also apply to be shortlisted on category Q, um, get into their service catalogue and be much more likely to be selected by agencies um, to assist with their reform. If you want to learn anything more about this, um, my team are all here. They'll be outside at the, um, at the uh, tables during um, further sessions. So you can go and speak to them. Um, obviously, speak to them in the break. Come and speak to me. But we also have a website that we have just launched today. So uh, www.finance.newsouthwales.gov.au slash govbpm. Please go take a look at that. And there are links there. There's information about the, the processes. We have release notes there to show you what we've, what we've introduced over the last few releases. Um, and it, there's also some contact details and information there too. So thank you very much for your time. Thanks, Sally. 
Um, I think the other thing that um, I take out of this morning is the way to see how all of these parts are interconnected. And I think you get a real sense of that, as you've heard the speakers this morning. Listen to the way that the work that we're doing in reform, the work that we're doing in processes, um, comes together in things like schemes, comes together in industry solutions, then enables us to really drive innovation and take some of those things forward. And I think that's really important.